Wada dang your heart, dang your heart, what a dang dang hang or dang your heart, dang your heart. What a dang dang. This is the blog post. Yeah, well, let a matam sang. Yabo! A.K.A. Kukushu, number where we speak truth to power. My brother, my sister, here we don't criticize. But if we must criticize, it means we would only criticize to build and not to destroy. We are in the service of God and country. This is from the news reel. Now, the very first story I'm looking at today is coming from a Terry News. Yes, treenews.com. And of course, that is the most authentic source of news online. No two ways about them, Tinder man. And uh, I read, it says, I can forgive Gabby because he isn't a securities market player. And that's a pensioner talking. So I read, one of the pensioners who picketed at the Ministry of Finance to protest their inclusion in the domestic debt exchange program, um, Dr. Edu Anani, has said Mr. Gabi Ochridaku does not understand issues related to securities, hence his recent comment against the pensioners' demonstration. He said he can forgive Gabi, who is a leading member of the governing New Patriotic Party, NPP, because of his seeming lack of understanding of the sector. Now, the pensioners, including former Chief Justice Sophia, uh, for, uh, Sophia have been picketing at the ministry since Monday, February 6th, to be exempted from the program. Now, speaking to journalists after joining a group of pensioners to picket at the Ministry of Finance in Accra on Friday, February 10th, Madam Sophia Akufu said, These are all the people who have worked. They have worked very hard. They could have left the country when others were going, but they stayed. They worked for the nation. We have had our ups and downs. A lot of us were from generations where we were encouraged to save for tomorrow and all that. We have been through times where all your savings become nonsense because of some government policies. Then over the years, bit by bit, people have become more confident in the economy and investments. <laughs> Now, my brother, my sister, hear me now. Hear me now. Listen. Now, I am so much interested in what Madame Sophia, former Chief Justice, said. And I'm going to read it out to you again. Mm -mm -mm. What did she say? She said, and I quote, mm -mm -mm -mm. These are people who have worked. They have worked very hard. They could have left the country when others were going. But they stayed. They worked for the nation. Hey, listen, man. Now, who is Gabi Asari Ochredakun? This was a man who was born in Chelsea. His father was called Ochredakun. His mother, Sophia Ufuriata. So this is a nephew of the President of the Republic of Ghana. He was born in England. In fact, Chelsea specifically in London, where he automatically became a citizen of the United Kingdom. Did you hear that? I need to say it again. The man in question right now, his name is Gabi Asari Ochredaku. Now, he was born in Chelsea, in London, to a father by name Ochredaku and a mother by name Sophia Oforiata. In fact, they come from the Oforiata family. So this makes him the nephew of the president. In fact, we can go deeper. But what I'm most interested in is the fact that this is a man who holds dual citizenships. He is a British and at the same time is Ghanaian. I don't trust people like that. Today, if there's a big bomb in Ghana, they are British. Tomorrow, if there's a big bomb in England, they are Ghanaian. My brother, my sister, you cannot look into the eye of a needle with two eyes. I've said this time and again. Not everybody, in fact, agrees with me. But that is the beauty of debate. I have no regard for people who have dual citizenship. Some people tell you, oh, they have dual citizenship because uh, it aids them to travel easily. No, sir. The Americans have single citizenship, right? Are they not able to travel around peacefully and easily? Stay and make your country that way so that you can also have the ease of travel and movement. How do you do it? By all of us coming together and using only one eye to look into the eye of the needle. 
Some people would not understand this. So people like Gabi to me are, are hypocrites. This is a man who talks Ghana, 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 yet he's not ready to let go his British identity. Why is the man still holding on to his British identity? Is it true that he has a British identity? Is he a British citizen? Is he not a British citizen? Now, by virtue of the fact that he was born in Chelsea, and at the time that he was born in Chelsea, he is automatically a British citizen. I have not read anywhere, nor seen anywhere, where Gabi Asari Ochridaku has decided to renounce his British citizenship. Now, people like this cannot be trusted. They come into the country egotistically, they are selfish, and all they want is what they want. From when they get what they want, then they are gone. Look at the story of Edu Boahin. Edu Boahin wanted to be the president of this country. I'm talking about Albert Edu Boahin, right? And when he came into the country and couldn't get the presidency, what did he do? He ran back to England where he has his allegiance and was teaching white people's children. Yet he belonged to a party called the New Patriotic Party, a party that claims it's patriotic. Yet, my brother, my sister, it looks like there's no member of the party. Let me be fair. Maybe just a couple of people in that party can be termed patriotic. These were the people who hated Ghana so much so that they pulled down all the factories Kwame Nkrumah built. These are the people. They hate Ghana so much that they chased Kwame Nkrumah out of this country with bombs. These are the so-called patriotic people. My brother, my sister, coming all the way from the UP family. And all the way, my brother, my sister, all they did was to pull down every investment that Kwame Nkrumah went into. And it looks like they are not stopping anytime soon. When you check it out, you will realize that they are still desecrating in ghana now people don't want to hear that word desecrate and the more they don't like it we will use it they are desecrating the legacy of Kwame Nkrumah. look at uh, the situation of the motorway right now the motorway that was built in 1965 in fact it paralleled the one in england called the m1 today my brother my sister is nothing but a death trap it's nothing but a den of thieves they would like to denigrate and pull down all the legacies of Kwame Nkrumah, all because they hate him so much and even hate Ghana. Remember when we were looking for independence, these were the same people who ran amok. Helter Skelter telling the Queen of England that we were not ready for independence, right? But when we finally got the independence, they were so happy to call themselves part of the big six. Listen, my brother, my sister, people like Gabi Asari Ochri Daku, have the DNA of traitors. They have the DNA of wicked people who do not want the progress of this country. All they can do is to come out there and denigrate anybody who has an idea that can build Ghana. Listen, my brother, my sister. Now, the former Chief Justice, Madam Sophia, decided to collaborate with the picketers, better still the demonstrators, right there in front of the Ministry of Finance, and she made it point blank Clear. What did she say? She said, I'm joining these people because of solidarity. I might not be in that same situation, but I find myself in that situation because my neighbors and aid mates are in that situation. Now, the 71 year old woman made it so clear. And remember that uh, this Chief Justice, known as uh, um, Sophia um, 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 Akufu, my brother, my sister, trained as a lawyer under the current president, Nana Akufuadu. At the time that she was the chief justice, she claimed that she was gagged. And every Ga a Ghanaian knows that uh, Nana Akufuadu is a president who loves to gag people. He's a very vindictive president who is looking out for people who do not support him. And for that matter, he would find a way of rusticating them and demonizing them. To God be the glory. Listen. Now the man here says, I understand you and I do forgive you because you are not a securities expert. Who is Gabi Asari Ochridaku? He's a journalist by training. He is a journalist by training. Today, my brother, my sister, I end it right here. But remember, if you have a dual citizenship and your mind is that, oh, I have this dual citizenship because it will help me become more comfortable. You are a hypocrite. My brother, my sister, stay with one. Same way you cannot look into the eye of a needle with two eyes, you must learn to use one eye in looking inside the eye of the needle. 
Now, holding a dual citizen, a single citizenship will help you become more patriotic because you know that this is all you have. Make or break, you are still here and you will do everything possible because you have no other choice. I don't know how many people reason the same way with me. My brother, my sister, next thing I want to look at is quite interesting. And it says, and I'm reading this from Peace FM Online. It says, making a crowd work again. Members of my own party are sabotaging me. And this is Henry Quarte speaking. Now, who is Henry Quarte? Let's see. Henry Quarte, the greater Accra regional minister, says some members of the governing new patriotic party are sabotaging his work in the region. The minister intimated uh, that let's make Accra work again to keep the capital city clean and free from indiscipline. As part of the initiative, the residents, including traders and hawkers, whose activities are dirty in the city, have been stopped from continuing the practice whilst those situated at wrong locations are being relocated. The project is seen by many of the residents and largely the population as a good initiative with the minister being called upon by some people to be transferred to some regions to replicate his good works there. But for some months now, the project has delayed, compelling people to question the minister's commitment to the let's make Accra work again. They wonder if the minister has given up in his quest to combat the improper practices or not. In an interview on Peace FM's Kokoroko show um, uh, Monday morning, the minister has disclosed why the project is not progressing. According to him, some members of his own political party are fighting vigorously to ensure he fails. Well, you heard it. Crops in the barrel. Look, look, I don't know who created us, honestly. Next time I'm able to meet God, I will ask him. Who created us as Ghanaians? A lot of us are mediocre in thinking. And a lot of us are so backward that not even God can make us understand anything. My brother, my sister, the opposition is busily trying to tarnish the image of the incumbent. No matter what the opposition does, no, the incumbent will never understand and will never give credit. And vice versa. Now, when they are in power, they are enemies to the opposition. And the opposition will do everything possible, including planting things around that will discredit the government in power. Now, when you sit back and ask, are you working towards the upliftment of Ghana? What you are doing, is it helping the people of Ghana grow? Or you are only being selfish because you don't have power, you will do everything possible to deflate the power that other people have. Now, listen, when you go to other countries that can be called civilized, huh? What they do is they still do their politicking, but genuinely they punch holes into things that do not inure to the benefit of their countries. With us, no. We will create a scenario that makes it look like the government in power is not doing anything good. And therefore, we start insulting the government, we start chasing the government, make the government confused, and of course, when they are out of power, they would also do the same thing. So it becomes a routine, cyclical um, madness and foolishness turning us around like hypocrites and parasites. When will this country ever grow? It is musical chairs of perpetrators of evil. Musical chairs of uh, uh, barbaric people who are not ready to see this country develop. And when you look at this, you will realize that we have a long way to go as a people. Now, when this man came, Henry Kwate, I don't know where he had this training from. He had so much energy and power, just like Oko Van der Poy, Doing a lot of things to make things happen. People are selling Kobe and Momoni on top of open drains. Some throw all kinds of things in the marketplace into these open drains. They are the same people who sell tomatoes and all other things there, including mangoes and onions. 
Now people go into the market, buy these mangoes. They do not even care to watch them. They start eating them, masticating them. My brother, my sister, they masticate this thing so vigorously you would think that they are lions who have not eaten for the past one year. Thereby introducing germs into their stomachs. When they fall ill, the taxpayer's money is what is used to take care of them for their carelessness. Today, Henry Quarter says, no, this madness must end. People who are selling things on top of open uh, drains are being asked to move. Those selling wares on the bare ground are told to raise their wares to a certain level. And there's a huge problem. He says his own party people are sabotaging him. Can you imagine? Now you'll be shocked that the party itself will not even investigate this. If this was a serious country, some committee would sit down with this man, find out who he thinks is sabotaging him. They would go into the bottom of this issue and make sure that people's heads would roll. After all, if you want to sabotage the country's growth, you are not patriotic. And therefore, you must be shown the exit. But no, trust me, nobody's going to do it. What is the solution? They need to go into it, find a way out, and let the man have his free will to do the work that he wants to do. My brother, my sister, I remember Oko Vanderpoy. In his days, he went to Sodom and Gomorrah. The Jamaican would say, Saddam and Gomorrah. He went down, they pulled down a lot of buildings. And all of a sudden, the president at that time, John Dramani Mahama, called him to a truce and told him, cease fire. You know what? Maybe he told him, if you continue like this, we'll lose the next election. It's all about elections, brethren. It's all about elections. Whatever we'll do to win elections, hey, in this country, you can never criticize anybody unless you have a personal vendetta. In this country, Anytime you criticize anybody, the first question they ask you is that, oh, but do you have a personal problem with him? What kind of a country is this? Who created us at all? I am now very convinced that Ghanaians were created by Satan. Next thing I want to look at is taken from Graphic Online. And it says, Galamse activities destroy electricity equipment. And I go straight into it. Graphic Online is the national communicator. So we want to believe that everything here is uh, um, endorsed by the government. It says, the Ghana Grid Company Limited, Gridco, has said the activities of illegal miners are affecting power transmission infrastructure in some parts of the country. It said the illegal miners, a.k.a. Galamse, has either dug around the base of transmission towers or stole the steel beams used to build transformers for their illegal mining activities. The chief executive officer, CEO of Greco Ebenezer, Kofi Esenyi, said this when he took his turn at the Ministry of Information's State of Agencies report series in Accra. Hear me now. Hear me now. Listen. Now this still boils down to the issue of patriotism. If you are patriotic, you will not destroy your country. Look, flora and fauna destroyed. In fact, when I was growing up as an 11-year-old, there were some animals we used to see around us. In my days, pigeons will fly around you. Bears of all kinds will come around you with no fear of being harmed today. In fact, when pigeons see you 10 million miles away, they are all flying very high away from you. We eat all kinds of animals in this country. Some people eat dogs. Some eat worms, a.k.a. a kokono. Some people even eat animal excreta. They use it for a bunubunu quang and they eat it with fufu. Now, a people who eat feces of animals, my brother, my sister, how on earth would you expect that they would have a right way of thinking? Why should you eat animal feces? Why should you eat that? My brother, my sister, a people who would eat anything at all, including anything at all, would always give 100% to their stomach. Whatever would make their stomach churn, that is where they would belong. Some people wouldn't understand this. Hear me? Listen. Hey, what I'm saying is this. They are stomach direction. 
Whoever is ready to pay them or give them food to eat, that is where their loyalty is. So any Tom, Dick, and Harry comes into this country and we are bought like little, little nitwits. Chinese people leave Guangzhou and Beijing. They do not know where to find gold anywhere in Ghana, but our own stomach direction people will direct them there. And the Chinese man all of a sudden who was a common prisoner in China now is the boss. And he has about 200 people working under him, yet he came into this country with nothing. We respect color. Once you have a pale skin, you are next to God. All of us will bow down before you and call you just any name to make you feed our stomachs. Listen, if patriotism came to the bargaining table, all of us would sit back and look at some of these things that we do to hurt our country. Now, these illegal mining activities pollute the water. We are the same people who drink the water and get sick. We are the same people who are polluting our environment. And when we are sick, we die here. The dirty politician who pushes us in there and gives us all the excavators to do all that when he is sick, he finds his way outside the country where the people are wiser, where the people don't eat animal feces, where the people do not eat some other things that I cannot mention on radio. My brother, my sister, and they've been able to keep their countries up to the beat. They run there and try to enjoy the civility in those countries when we have totally bastardized our own, destroyed it with nothing but barbarism. Hallelujah. When will this country develop? When will this country come to the bargaining table of patriotism? If the churches will spend at least one, five minutes every time to preach patriotism, in fact, to preach morality, and stop the too much preaching of prosperity without hard work, my brother, my sister, this country, within one year, will become a newly developed country, and it will look like the capital of the whole of Africa. Hallelujah. Yeah. I'll leave it here. Next thing I'm going to look at is taken from my joy online. It says, Gabi can call me paranoid, but I don't care. So fire Akufu back to picket on a finance, uh, to picket finance ministry. I read it. Former Chief Justice Sophia Akufu says, uh, the president's cousin, Gabi Asari Ochredakun can call her paranoid regarding the domestic debt exchange program, DDEP, but she cares less. She does not appear satisfied with the justifications given by the finance ministry for the inclusion of pensioners in the debt exchange program. Madam Akufu is back to the, at the premises of the ministry after triggering an uproar when she showed up to join her peers last Friday, February 10, 2023. Now, the Dankwa Institute founder, Mr. Ochre Dakun, was one of the key individuals who criticized the move as misplaced for a former chief justice to take up a noble cause such as she did. But at such late hour, when all was done and for all that publicity, she owed it to herself and her social understanding to her social standing to have understood the issues far better than what she exhibited last Friday. She is bigger than that. Well, now when you read the background of this man here called Gabi Asarochodaku, in fact, he's a critic. I like critics. But he is a very biased, overly opinionated homo sapiens. This is a guy. In fact, he is the creator of the Dankwa Institute, the so-called think tank. Yet he holds a dual citizenship. People like that, we should never listen to them until they throw away one of the citizenships and show their real color. Two-faced people don't have any respect in our eyes. To God be the glory. Well, my name is Black Rasta, and I'm 